Howdy folks. Welcome back to EIS Alaska. Well, we're down in the engine room and uh, just kind of getting ready to do some work on our fuel system. Uh, kind of feels like we're taking one step forward, two steps back right now. Uh, we got this tank all replumbed, new valve, new sight glass. Everything's good to go over here. We're just starting to design the manifold that's going to link these four tanks together and allow us to pull fuel to our main or our generator or whatever else we need, um, our stove up top. Um, so that was all going good. Uh, we've got our lines hooked up to our tanks in the lazarette now, the ones that go through our shaft alley, and we're actually pulling off one of the tanks for our generator. Um, the main was coming off of this tank, but something catastrophic happened the other day. Um, this tank was about, probably about half full, and uh, we came back to the boat one morning, and there was about two or three inches of fuel in the stringer down here. And so at some point over the night, this thing had sprung a leak. So really quite annoying. Um, we were actually gonna drain it down and get the valve swapped out on that one, get a new sight glass on it anyways. But now the problem is that we've got a leaky tank. And so that's a 200 gallon tank. Um, the starboard side is also 200 gallon, and then the port, we have uh, 800 gallons total to 400 gallon tanks. And so we don't really wanna lose this tank because it helps keep us trim. It's nice to be able to transfer fuel to one side or the other to help keep your vessel trim or to burn off one side. If you're listing, say to the port side, we burn off this tank and it helps bring our list back. So it's kind of important to be able to trim your boat out and that's one of, one of the very common ways to do it. So we really hate to just abandon this tank um, right now. Our long-term plan was actually to get rid of them and integrate them into these voids down here that are fiberglassed and, and fiberglass new tanks and down there. We would lose some volume, but there's a lot of really good things about it is that we lower our center of gravity by putting the fuel down there. One of, one of the uh, pros is that we'd lower our center of gravity by putting the fuel down there and also makes use of what's essentially just dead space right now. And then the flip side is that we'd have a nice bench-like thing here to, you know, by removing these two tanks, it just opens us all up. We could move our generator back there. We could put a house generator on that side. So that's just kind of forward thinking things anyways, but um, we're not ready for that yet. <laughs> yeah, that's a, a very big undertaking. Yeah, it's which, a big undertaking. It will take uh, a lot of effort <clears throat> and planning and materials. <laughs> yeah. So um, as you can see, we got our crowd pump slung here again. Had to get it out of the way. Um, we had to remove the support that was back in this corner. We basically, uh, we disconnected the vent line back here, ran an air hose to this and put a little bit of pressure in here. Went around with soapy water. The fuel was coming out of these gashes right here and then also back here running down. So we thought maybe there was something going on in here. There used to be a big steel bracket here. We thought maybe one of the bolts had been pushed up against here and and had some corrosion issues and it finally just let go. Um, funny thing is actually is that this tank hasn't leaked a bit um, for, well, at least a year and a half since we cleaned all this out really good. We've been pulling off this tank constantly since then for our furnace that was out on deck that supplied us with heat during our fiberglass project, um, also for the generator. And so, um, we didn't have this problem until the other day when Matt came in here with a little oscillating tool and trimmed this fiberglass that was here. It was laid up here and it was just pulling away and it was just like a deadly knife edge. If you ever fell on it, it'd, it'd lay you, you wide open. Um, I don't know if you can really see it there a little bit, but. Yeah, there's a little bit of leftover. Dangerous situation. Um, at any rate, uh, he touched the tank on spots. It didn't cut through it. 
Um, but I think what it did was it vibrated this thing and just created enough vibration that it agitated the fuel and it broke loose that area that was corroded. So we removed this, this support here. There's a big, like a four by six right here. Yeah, it's over right there. Yeah, we, we removed that to get it out of our way, um, hoping that we could see something that was going back going on back in here and uh, sure enough, you know, when, when we shine the flashlight in here, we can just see the big pile of nasty white corrosion. It's the worst thing ever. So uh, I think what has happened is that there was some galvanized carriage bolts like you see right here. And one of them was proud down in that corner. And because of the leaks on the deck, like the fill pipe had leaked, there was other leaks. You can see where water's run back here and run down. I think that it was touching the tank and that salt water got in between it. And it just, it creates the, the best environment for severe corrosion as far as aluminum is concerned. Like you, you almost can't get a worse scenario. And that's exactly where it is. I can put a, a long um, Sawzall blade in there and I can feel something hard like a bolt head and there is no room at all to get it in between that hard spot in the tank so that tells me that it's a bolt up against it and I'm almost guaranteed that it's a carriage bolt so I just can't say how annoying this whole thing is because this is not an easy fix by any means um, as you can probably tell this thing is shoehorned in here absolutely shoehorned in here. There's no room behind the tank. Um, you've got the tank, the bottom of the tank is actually down here. As you can probably tell, the, these tanks are like shoehorned in here. Um, there's no easy way to get these out of here. And even if you did, you still couldn't work on it. There's, there's no way to get these tanks out of this engine room without physically chopping them into pieces. Uh, or cutting a big hole in the fish hold bulkhead to pull them out. Um, the tank actually comes down to here. And so this is just like a big, huge, you know, support that they put in to, to keep it from moving. And uh, there's no room in the back of it. It's pressed up against that. Up here, we've got the generator in the way. It's really no easy way to move that. And even if we could, we could only slide it about eight inches forward. So that's not gonna help us much. And, uh, and then of course we've got these exhaust components in the way. We don't have much height up here. So. Yeah, I got the deck <sighs> beam going back there, which is like tucked under. Oh yeah. So <laughs> you can't lift, lift the back there. And there's a deck beam. Yep. Yeah, so um, just nothing about this is good really. <laughs> so uh, we're trying to figure out what to do. Um, most likely we're going to patch it in place and cut a big hole in the side, patched from the inside. That's one idea. Um, very feasible, not much fun. Uh, we've done something similar on a, on a tank on our skiff before um, that was actually under the floorboard, went in and, and cut out about a, a 10 inch square, got in there with the TIG and TIG to back up. We can do the same with this. Um, but then we also got to thinking that we want to do something about our hydraulics on here. Um, this is our hydraulic tank right here behind us. It's pretty undersized for what we want to do with the boat later. We're going to have to address it. One of the thoughts was build a bigger tank and put it in front of these fuel tanks. And that would work good, except the suction line would have to kind of we put a tank right here, it fit pretty nice and everything, be easy to work on, but then we'd have to come down with a suction line down here, across the floor, meander back up here. Not completely ideal, but pretty doable. Um, this is kind of a big mess. I really don't like it. We've got all these hoses right here, right in the vicinity of, of hot exhaust. It's not ideal at all. So this red one is for the suction for our steering. This goes to, uh, this is the steering pump down here. And that's what, uh, what we steer the boat with essentially. 
The smaller one is for, uh, oh, like a Jabsco pump. Oh, what else is running this? Uh, it'll run the anchor winch. And then uh, this larger one is also for the anchor winch and any anything you got going out on deck. So um, this is a horrible setup. I've been wanting to do something with it anyways. So now I'm kind of starting to think that maybe we should just convert part of this guy into the hydraulic tank. So that might work out really good for us because two things can happen. We'll lose a little bit of volume on this tank but not very much. Um, it'll allow us to shorten this tank, which gets it away from this bulkhead and potential problems downstream or in future us, I guess. Uh, if we convert part of this into a hydraulic tank and we just shorten it by two inches, we can put an inch between here. We can put an inch between these tanks. We can pull this piece out to weld an end cap on it. We can manipulate this one around by removing this piece here and get it turned enough to get an end cap on it. So by no means is it gonna be easy, it's gonna be a horribly uncomfortable job, I know that, but it is um, completely doable too, I'm sure of that. So I think that that is kind of what we're looking at doing. So that might be the silver lining in this whole thing. So the nice thing is that we can bring our suction line for our hydraulics right out of this corner where it is now, right across here. Then we just put a little manifold here and we come up with our suction lines into this pump. Have one off of our steering pump. We'll still use this for the steering, but we'll have it teed into this one in case we ever have a failure of like a hose or something and dump all our fluid. We can easily just tap into that one after a repair is made and be right back online without having to try and refill a tank. Um, when it's probably not convenient to do so. And then, uh, and then we just have our supply right here. So that's kind of what we're thinking. So let us know what you think in the comments down below. Um, like I say, it's not gonna be an easy job, but, uh, but we have to do something. If we made that uh, tank 10 inches wide, it'd be about 55 gallons of hydraulic fluid, which is really quite, Perfect. Um, that would be fine. I don't think, I didn't measure this one out, but it's pretty small. And so I don't even know what this one holds. It's uh, probably 16. I don't have my calculator here with me, but it's 20 by 16. So that's 320 and six wide. not very much. I'd have to do the math. I, I, I do have to do the math. I'm curious. Stand by. Yeah, we got a few uh, check valves here, selector switch. These are the returns here. It's kind of a mess, mess of hydraulics. Yeah, and that stuff would still be okay in the short term. Yeah. Because we could just run it right across the ceiling and drop it in to the return on that tank. I wouldn't be in a big hurry to move it because those, uh, those filter housings are kind of like, that stuff all needs rebuilt. Um, we wouldn't want it leaking over our crowd pump. Uh, so let's see what we got here for volume on that. I said that thing was uh, six by 16. By 20. By 20. So that's 1920 cubic inches. Divide by 1728, that's gonna give us cubic foot. That's 1.1 cubic foot at uh, about seven and a half gallons. That's like an eight gallon tank. That's nothing. That's nothing, yeah. So that tank is so small that if, if you, because every, so this is part of the problem here is that you're pulling off of everything on there. So we're gonna be, uh, say we're gonna be hauling um, gear on deck with our, with our crab block or our long line reel, if we blow a hose out there, you're gonna dump that, that oil in about three seconds out there. Um, 20 gallon a minute pump, boom. 
you're done. Before you can even get down here to shut off the hydraulics, you're gonna dump everything out on that tank and you're gonna be out of oil. And that's fine and dandy, but now you've got no steering as a result. Because guess what? Your, your steering pump is hooked up to the same tank. It's not a good situation at all. No. It really isn't. And so, um, so like I say, there's kind of a silver lining in the, this because number one, we, like I say, we don't want to lose this tank. So it, it forces us to do something with this. Number two, these hydraulics need to be addressed. And the sooner we do it, the better. Um, for quite a few different reasons. Uh, that tank is very small. And so when you're running that constantly hauling gear and stuff, that oil is going to be hot all the time. Um, there's no easy way to hook up an oil cooler to it right now. And so I think if we just come in here and we cut a hole in the side of this, right in here somewhere, then we can cut across the top of it and we've got a hole in the side big enough to get in there and cut it from the inside, cut it from the inside, cut the floor from the inside and then we can break that piece apart and we'll be able to get that one out of there and then convert it to a hydraulic tank. There's enough room in here to manipulate it around and do the welding down here. Everything will have to be down here. I don't think we could even get that small piece through. No chance. No chance, but we can get a welder down here. So that's no problem. Um, probably get everything cleaned up, probably just TIG weld it. And then I don't have to worry about holes or anything. Probably yeah, be pretty comfortable too, MIG welding slag it. not going everywhere. Yeah, that's the other thing. Um, and you don't have all the smoke either. Oh yeah, that's true. And so uh, that, that'd be the best way to go it. And, uh, and I do like to TIG weld, so um, I think that that might be the plan. And also yeah. we'll probably go over it when we do it, but uh, TIG welding is really nice on tanks, not having to look for pinholes mm -hmm. that you do with MIG welding. So yeah. we'll definitely go over that as we're doing it. I'm pretty confident in most of my, my MIG welding, but on dirty metal, it can be hard. Uh, at least with TIG welding, it's easy to go back and, and melt your puddle again and seal up holes. Any, any kind of areas that you might be worried about, it's just, it's just way easier all in all. Uh, where you stop running a bead, it's easy to, to go right back into that spot and pick it up again. And, and not have potential leaks where you, where you stop and start, so. In regards to cooling, we also considered uh, having the tank outside just to keep it out of the hot engine room, mm -hmm. but we're not exactly sure how we feel about that with uh, condensation issues and whatnot. Yeah, there's a lot of vessels in the fleet that do have their hydraulic tanks outside. A lot of people like will make them in like the shape of a step to go up to their flying bridge, things like that. I don't know. They honestly, they're always just a mess. It's just a, just a mess. It seems like I, I look around at some of the boats and they're all just, you know, oily, greasy mess around them and, and dripping and, and I hate it. Um, I can't stand hydraulic leaks and fuel leaks and, and that's why this is so aggravating to come down <laughs> here and see this because yeah. this fuel system was an absolute disaster. It was it was a huge mess, and you know we finally we get everything cleaned up down here. I mean it's a it's a a million times better than it used to be. And so then to come down here and see all this fuel in the stringer, it's like, oh, yeah, God, the funny thing where did it come from? That tank was full from Juno. We came up here with a full. We. We uh, pulled off it for the mm -hmm. run up, and yep. it, everything was fine. Yep. Until and that oscillating tool just and we've been it using it, you know, <laughs> on this whole project. It's had fuel in it the whole time. I mean, it was full, and and all the stuff was clean. And so I know it wasn't leaking until the other day. So yeah, it was just enough to agitate and rattle this thing, and that's all it took. <laughs> so, you know. I mean, everything happens for a reason, and I'm glad it happened now as opposed to when we were out fishing. Um, it didn't dump the whole tank by any means. We probably lost, what, a gallon? gallon yeah, and a half probably a gallon. Of fuel. Yeah. But, um, 
but the potential to have a very big leak is there now. It's just a matter of time before that tiny pinhole turns into something the size of a, a dime. And then that would drain this tank very, very quickly mm -hmm. um, in have a matter that, of have that mess 15 or 20 constantly. minutes. Yeah, and, and then, yeah, just the mess and, you know, you, you get the stuff cleaned up and, mm -hmm. and you want it to be nice and clean. And, uh, yeah. So I think that uh, going forward, this is going to be a very interesting project. We're gonna, we have to get in here and deal with this because we got to get this pump put back in place and get all this plumbing put together. And none of that can happen until this tank is dealt with. And like I say, it kind of solves a couple of different problems all at once. It, uh, it lets us deal with, with this mess right here and get this all cleaned up, which needs work because like everything else on this boat, all these uh, fittings and hoses on this is all kind of leaky and needs to be gone through anyways. And um, it'll clean up that whole area right there a whole lot. Kind of get that stuff away from this. I think that we can route these suction lines over on this side and over and just make this hose over here to a manifold. So it gets all this stuff away from this hot exhaust, um, cleans this area up in general. I think it'll be a lot better like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if we'll be able to... So there's a bracket that's here. I don't know if we'll be able... I think that I think we'll be able to sneak that pipe right past here. Honestly, I, I think that there's just so that that is about that big, and I think that we can right here in this bell of this spot. I think we can sneak that hose past, and then just right over the top of this, and that will be perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. It's fine if the suction line is a little bit lower than these, um, or the supply to these suction lines because your fluid's gonna be way up here. Anyway, so it's gonna press, it's gonna press that oil into these suction lines, so that won't be an issue at all. Um, yeah. So, like I say, uh, one step forward, two steps back, you think you're making progress, and then some weird thing like this happens. Um, I just hope that the same, same thing isn't going on with the other side. I don't know if there's a gap between the wall and the tank right there. I think, is there a it gap? It kind of looks like it, yeah. Yeah. So I think there's a little bit more room on that side. This one is pressed up tight right here. So I, I know it's right up against a bolt. And it's annoying too because if I look on the back side of that tank, there is about an inch of room back there. But on this, on this inside edge, there, there just isn't. It's, it's just right up tight against the bulkhead down here. And the spot that's leaking is about right in here somewhere. Yeah. So anyways, I just thought we'd share that with you guys. Um, sometimes that's how it goes. It's kind of one step forward, two steps back. In this case, we're bucking the tide, but pretty soon we'll be, you know, on the flood and running with it again. So um, in the meantime, thanks for joining us. If you enjoy the video, please leave a like. Um, if you enjoy the channel, please subscribe if you haven't. It doesn't cost you a thing. It really helps our algorithm. If you have any comments, questions, ideas, drop it in the section below and uh, tell us what you think. Um, and next time, thanks for joining us at EIS Alaska and we'll see you again soon. <laughs>